Okay, so today I want to talk about techniques and why why they're not necessary, but they may be necessary depending on what you're imagining for. Um, so let me just pop up a nice little some infographics about it right here. Well, just just a literal word, not even a graphic. Um, so I don't have a quote, but I think it's in your faith is your fortune, where Neville talks about when he. This is one of his first introductions of um, explicitly stating how you would get really relaxed and do an I am meditation and then move into your imaginal act, which he would recommend as being a looped and short visualization with other senses integrated. So if it was for marriage, um, you would imagine a ring on your finger, touching it, you know, having some sort of very quick interaction with it and having a real pride over it um, and feeling the swelling of love that for the person, whether specific or non-specific, uh, you would just delight in being a happily married person. The, I'm just telling you his, his recommendations, like the, the ones that he said some, a million times. Uh, if it was a job, you would <clears throat> visualize and do over and over a handshake and also feel the grip of the handshake. You might <clears throat> see and hear a specific person that you know would congratulate you. <clears throat> see their face and give them a quick line of dialogue. Congratulations, you got the job. And you would do that over and over and over until you either fell asleep or felt it or felt a thrill of it being real. Felt it so incredibly real that you were there. Um, he would say it sort of explode and something goes out of you. Um, and then you just leave that meditation. You just literally just open your eyes, go about your life, or if you fall asleep, <laughs> just fall asleep. Um, but he says that the only reason why you even need a technique like that is because you are so hypnotized um, by the current reality. Because part of that whole sequence, that whole technique there, is that when you are meditating, doing the I am meditation, and relaxing prior to the imaginal act, Primarily what you're doing is shutting out the current world, shutting out your current body of beliefs and your current assumptions and their manifestations and so that you can focus into this new reality, into this different state that you want to experience. Um, but because people are so hypnotized by what's currently going on, they find it dip difficult to simply change their thoughts. All you really have to do to obtain anything you want is decide you already have it. It doesn't have to be visual. You don't have to you don't have to do a lot of the things that anybody would think of as imagining, such as visualizing or hearing somebody tell you you have it um, or feeling that you have it physically. You would you don't have to necessarily employ any of that because man is all imagination. So any sort of um, language based words or even emotion um, ba language based thoughts or emotion based thoughts you have are equally as creative so you could simply right now feel with or without words that you have something so if you want I don't know, a blue Lambo which I don't want I want a blue Viper but if I wanted a, the blue Viper and I wanted it you know as soon as possible I could just simply right now feel Though thinking of it already induces the imagery that I have one, that I have one of these. And then it would kind of inspire people talking to me about it. But there's that core, I have this feeling associated with anything you want. And all you have to do is step into that and appropriate that. And that's enough for the thing to happen. Um, so for a lot of little things, and this it was interesting because it started happening where I didn't, I didn't even write them down and they would happen. I would just have a desire and be like, yeah, I want that. And that was it. I want that. And when I would say I want that, there's an implication to me personally that I'm going to get it. Um, and so if that alone can cause your manifestation. But if you're not yet in that state, you are you don't find these you know, quick decisions, yet a thing that you believe in and have work for you, though there's no reason why they can't work for you today right now. Um, then a technique is is very 
helpful and useful. Um, so when he talks about it, he was mostly talking about the insufficient faith. Um, so because you either doubt the law or you doubt that this thing is possible for you from your current concept of self, you can't integrate it. Um, so you would use a technique so that you could feel that this thing is already so. And that's very much related to the next one, which is too much focus on your current reality. Um, if you are wanting to claim wealth for yourself, but there's a million bills coming in and literally you are trying to decide between paying a bill and buying groceries, it's going to be hard. <laughs> so you're going to have to do, you know, you're going to have to really let go of the exterior world and step into that feeling of wealth in that relaxed state um, and have probably a lot of affirmations and be really, be really, really uh, conscious of your thought throughout the day whenever you're, you're thinking about money, whenever you're buying something. You'd be really cautious about those kind of thoughts. Um, and then the, the next is, um, like, as you start to manifest more and more things, have a lot more of your needs met, you will find this to be um, a really critical reason why you still use more advanced movements in mind or techniques, uh, which is that you want specific details. So especially I find this when I'm imagining for how I want to renovate this place, I'm, I'm very picky about everything. But even just for smaller things like how I want to organize my kitchen right now, um, you know, there are, there are very specific details I want. Like if I want a spice rack, I don't just want any spice rack. I want it to look and function in a certain way. And so I can go look and browse at items, but eventually I need to visualize it and I need to see it in the space. And so for me, that kind of visualization is very helpful to define what I want and give me some guidance on how, um, it just helps me get a better picture of what I want so that it's more, it's far more likely to show up as a recommended item for me. Um, and especially when it comes to like how you want a certain relationship to play out. Um, you know, you may be very specific about certain lines of dialogue you want the person to tell you. Um, so imagining hearing them telling you that or if you want a certain event to happen, sometimes it's, it's useful to go with another person and go with a, um, a third person that you would talk to and talk to them about how successful this event was for you uh, related to the person you wanted to happen with. Um, those sort of imaginal techniques are very useful for getting those little details hammered in. Um, to give an example of what I'm talking about there, if you want to go to a concert see a specific artist um, with your best friend or your partner let's say your your, your partner um, yes you can imagine going to it with them but you might find that you can include more details if you imagine talking to your best friend about having gone to that concert with your partner and all the things you guys did there together you can certainly combine them there's no reason why you can't do both so it helps you more define a lot of those details you would like to have happen um, but my point is imaginal techniques are useful there when you want all those little things worked in uh, really identify the state and bask in it that's very much related to uh, the too much focus on current reality um, and the next one know the thoughts and feelings of the state so when your current reality is a little bit is a little bit or a lot bit far from what you want to be experiencing regularly as your sort of default um, state, your default set of experiences, um, really spending time, especially visualizing, helps you move your mind into that state. And instead of perpetually, as Neville says, thinking from and not of, uh, perpetual um, deferred occupancy, perpetual construction are these contrasted things here. You, what you want is occupancy. You want to step into already having this instead of always thinking about possibly having it. <laughs> so, And if you look at things you have now, whether there are an, some sort of aspect of who you are or physical objects, the way you think about them is different 
to how you thought about those things before you had them. So let's say, for example, um, well, here's here's one that would apply to a lot of people who are watching this. Um, you've you've successfully graduated high school. <laughs> how do you think about high school now? <laughs> like when I ask you, did you graduate high school? You would say, yeah, of course I graduated high school. But for some people out there, maybe that would have been up in the air and, and for a little bit, or maybe you were just you could have been in a state where is this ever going to end? Uh, is it going to be the sort of like am I going to get into the unit? Like your thoughts, your thoughts when you were like a junior or a sophomore in high school were very different to your thoughts about high school now. Where it's like, yeah, of course I graduated high school. That was way too many years ago. <laughs> um, but I bring that up because that difference in thoughts is the difference between having the thing and not having the thing. Um, so if you live somewhere now that you prior wanted to live before, um, when you lived in a place that wasn't what you wanted, um, your thoughts about where you lived uh, were very different to your thoughts now where you live somewhere that you like, right? Um, also, you can apply that. If you suddenly don't want to live where you live anymore, you can apply that towards your next place you're going to move to. What I have found, the more that I analyze my um, my pre-conscious manifestations, the more I recognize that the desire was enough to move me into what I wanted um, and the simple assumption that it would happen. Like, I don't care what has to happen, this is going to happen. Um, the, the difference, though, being pre-conscious and now conscious is that even if the unfoldings are rocky still, because some of them are, are a little bit annoying still, I don't I don't have as much anxiety about that. And I still have the total confidence that I'm gonna get what I want. Like I don't get I don't get as disturbed by the unfoldings. And my unfoldings are getting better altogether as you know, and as you move as you progress in terms of your self concept, your unfoldings will get better. Um They'll get faster. You can get impossibly fast ones. You encounter a lot more of it is already done type unfoldings um, where there's zero effort involved. The Literally the thing you want um, has already been made. and <laughs> It could just show up in your reality instantly. Um, but so yeah, that is... I think that's a, that hopefully that is a good enough explanation of why you would even want to use a technique you don't have to. Um, I, I think currently, some one thing I'm noticing as a trend in the LOA space is a, is an, a, an emphasis on affirmations, um, but the vain repetition kind of affirmations. Because you know, once you have what you want, you're probably not going to be thinking about it that much. If you are a compulsive and obsessive thinker, perhaps. But if you are that type of thinker, be careful about your affirmations because you may be using some that are sort of like, kind of like the ones I have up on the screen right now where it's like, you wouldn't think that about it. My little, I am absolute freedom. I am totally devoted love. I am blissful joy. Now you can obviously focus on those things and experience them. But for the most part, if you're thinking about getting a car or a house or marrying somebody or getting a job or going on a trip or moving somewhere, most of the suggested stock affirmations are not actually what you're going to think about. So for that reason alone, I think visualizing it will really help you identify the thoughts you would actually have once the thing is done. You know, it, it just will. Uh, but generally, you know, I don't think as many people are that compulsively looping their thoughts. Um, there's certainly not as many times as they would affirm for them. It's a very unnatural movement of thought. Um, so for for that reason alone, um, examining your the techniques that actually work for you, the movements in mind that actually work for you, might save you a ton of stress and and really just wasted wasted mental space. Um, and it's just one of these things that's a little bit I know, depending on the thing, I don't think that way. Sometimes I do. But depending on the thing, I usually don't think that way. 
especially with any kind of physical object, I don't. I wouldn't be looping a ton of thoughts about I have this thing now. It would just kind of be, you know, the quick th- thrill of getting it, and then it's just something I have in the house, you know. And that's how I've manifested a lot of physical objects that I wanted. Um, a lot of times, you know, folding is I buy them, but you know what? Also, a lot of times, there's something really specific that's hard to find, like this freaking coaster. Like, <laughs> as boring and basic as this looks, it's just a slate coaster. This was actually pretty hard to find. And it wasn't until I really vividly visualized it uh, that I found some for sale. Okay, um... Oh, the last little thing I want to say about techniques is your favorite technique may be the easiest way for you to assume you already have something. So if you're someone who, like me, likes to really daydream, daydreaming and having that kind of reverie may be far and away better for you than, you know, picking a list of affirmations and looping those. Um, Though for me, it's kind of, it would be kind of a combo. Um... But I do know what has always worked reliably for me is Neville's recommendation of to get relaxed, go into that meditative state first, and then looping a sort of visualized scene. Uh, But daydreaming works really great for me, too. Desireless also work. um, But the idea, really what I'm trying to convey to you right now is you don't need to do any prescribed technique that other people are recommending. You just need to pay attention to your thoughts often enough to see which ones are creating for you, to see what kind of movements in mind are most efficacious for you uh, to have a manifested result, for good or bad. All right, this intro rant was a little bit longer than I anticipated it to be, so I'm going to take a quick break and then we're going to come back uh, and and get into the and get into the lesson. Given that I've already been <laughs> I've already been talking for a good 35 minutes, I don't know how much of the lecture I will do tonight. I don't think I'll finish it, but or lesson, but we'll do probably half of it. All right, so I'll be right back in about five minutes.